Yo, what's going on, y'all? You're back. I'm your host, Paco. You're listening to Occupied Media. Okay, so we're going to jump back into this interview. Uh, I think it's a pastor from Georgetown or something like that on Colbert Report. And uh, just to catch you up, if you're joining us, uh, earlier Colbert took a, a swipe at Ron Paul. I didn't really appreciate that. But in this interview, this guy is trying to make the case that we need to help the poor. You know, that Paul Ryan's budget is bad because they just want to cut uh, all, the, all the programs, which I don't, I don't agree with Paul Ryan at all. Uh, but at the same time, I don't agree with the pastor and the Democrats at all either. They're, they're missing the point and they're missing the problem. So we're going to finish up this interview that he was giving on, on Colbert. Who are rich is we encourage them to be good Christians and help those who are in need and pay their taxes. Jesus did say to pay your taxes and to help uh, people in that way. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I don't remember that part. <laughs> but what, what you're talking about is redistribution of wealth. That's socialism. Shocking, isn't that is, it? That's socialism, okay? And that's Jesus a... did not room with Karl Marx, okay? <laughs> last time I checked, sir. The last time I checked, however, though, Pope Benedict, who is not known as a liberal, uh, actually says that one of the purposes of government is to redistribute wealth. Okay, so Paul Benedict says we need to redistribute wealth. What does the Constitution say? Who cares what Paul Benedict says? You know, he could take that and shove it for all I care. We don't need to redistribute anything. You cannot take a group of bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. and say, hey, you're going to take this amount of money from this group of people, and then you're going to go and pass it around to this other group of people. Because you know what's going to happen in between that passing out money? They're going to pocket it themselves. The government is the middleman in everything. They're the middleman when it comes to colleges. They're the middleman when it comes to all these loans with the banks. The middleman with medicine. They're the middleman with all types of things. And what do they do? They make the cost higher. They make the quality worse. Because you got bureaucrats in the middle playing the middleman that don't need to be there. They don't. All they need to do is enforce contracts, just like Ron Paul says. As long as people can't break the law, there's no reason for people out here getting shisted and people getting their money taken away and taken from the banks and 401ks and pensions being stolen. It's because nobody's being held accountable. So if you own a bank and you're breaking all the laws or you see other banks in the same block breaking all the laws and no one's getting in trouble, what are you going to do? You're going to keep doing what you're doing. So all in the name of helping people, they want, to, they want to get people to pay more taxes, which those taxes are probably not going to even fall on the rich because they got so many loopholes. It's probably going to fall on the middle class and the poor, and we got to pay for the devaluing dollar because they're going to print some more money up. So who gets the, the bad end of the stick? The middle class and the poor people. It's all just these pretty words they try to say, tax the rich, help the poor. It doesn't help at all. You can't have the same. It's the same criminals doing the taxing. The government, the 1%. They're what are they going to do, tax themselves? All they're doing is giving their money right back to themselves. They all run the system. That is, they're going to do anything. Forget taxing these rich people. Put them in jail. The ones that are breaking the laws, stealing taxpayer money, getting these bailouts, they need to be put in jail. Free market system would bankrupt them, and that's what will happen. To help poor people so that they can have a chance that we should not concentrate all the wealth of the world in the hands of a very few people. But when you redistribute wealth, where is the money? It's in a few, hand, a few, uh, a few hands of people. Uh, it's going to be passed out to other people, but it's being manipulated. It's being played with by a small group. So what this guy's talking about makes no sense, and the reason why this crowd is... is, is it's cheering. It makes no sense because they fall into these talking points. You know, they put the left versus the right and the left think they're right. They're not. But if we if, if we did keep the wealth in in the hands of the wealthiest people, wouldn't that be good for the kids who want to go to Georgetown? Because it costs like eight hundred thousand dollars a year to go there now, doesn't it? That's a little hypocritical. And why does it cost eight hundred thousand dollars a year to go there now? Let's think. Let's think. Government. That's why. Talk to Ron Paul. He said a lot of uh, what? A lot of colleges and and uh, tuition you could pay off 20, 30, 40 years ago. You could pay off by working a summer job or something. Can you do that now? No. And why is that? Because the government gets involved. They carry. They do the loans. They do these ridiculous loans, and the and the and the, the schools ask for ridiculous 
uh, amounts of money because they know that, that these students are getting loans from the government. And then they're stuck paying it for the rest of their life with no jobs, thanks to government, all for the sake of helping people out, helping poor, helping people who need college education. It's all just a setup. Is it, Padre? I- this is why we're also very upset about the cuts in Pell Grants in the... In the hey, uh, I teach in Sunday the school. <laughs> Sir, I teach Sunday school. Jesus didn't say anything about Pell Grants. <laughs> well, Father, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Father Tom Reese, Georgetown University. We'll be right back. Okay, so yeah. So like I was saying, man, redistributing wealth, giving the government more power isn't going to help. People are poor, but they've been poor. And the whole time... The government's been in power and passing all these laws, all these programs, <clears throat> and things are getting worse. People tell me the government got to got to take care of health care because people are, out, out, you know, not don't have any health care. Well, why is that? Why does it keep getting worse? The government been in the health care business for how long? And every year, more and more people are without. So what's going on? It doesn't work. That's why I'm so glad that Ron Paul pointed this out because people make it like the government is God and the government is supposed to run everything and I come from a, a background or I come from you know majority of people I hung around with I grew up with have a liberal mindset a democrat mindset and I used to think of myself as a democrat only because I couldn't stand republicans but Ron Paul made me realize that it's not uh, democrats and republicans are both wrong but republicans have the right philosophy they just don't live by it they say one thing and do another and that's why they don't get the credibility that they want that's why they don't get the love that they want uh, but now the party's getting bigger because of Ron Paul because he's waking us up and making us realize that, look, the government is just people like your people. The only difference is they're corrupt people with power. Okay? Everything they do, we can do ourselves. All this talk about we need federal government, we got to pay all these taxes and we need a government. How are we going to have roads and how are we going to have all this? Acting like people are retarded. Acting like people are stupid and dumb, like we can't do it ourselves, like we can't take care of our own cities and our own states. Like somehow we need these bureaucrats because they're like Superman or something. We can't do anything without them. The difference is we'll do a lot better without them if they just get out of the way. And that's what we got to realize. Free market, bankrupt these corrupt people, you know, bad customer service, bad products, you know, lying, taking risks. Then you go out of business. You go bankrupt. You don't get bailed out like this, this economy does. And if you go out of business, you get bankrupt. What happens? Only the good businesses are stuck around. And those people that are shysty and have shenanigans going on and want to steal and rob people, well, they're going to be out of business or they're going to have to get their act together, even if they got to fake it. Even if you got to have fake good customer service, then that's what you're going to have to do if you want people to keep coming around and keep making money. But now the government keeps the crooked people in business, allows them to steal our money, keep blowing the money. What? J.P. Morgan just lost, what, two more billion dollars. Nothing happened. Nothing's going to happen. All they're going to do is say, oh, we need more regulations. So instead of hurting Jamie Dimon in the banks, we're going to hurt more of the smaller people because of what he did. It's all a setup, y'all. Anyways, we'll be back. I'm your host, Paco. You're listening to Occupy the Media.